Welcome back and thank you for staying with us. Nigerian ports are confronted with many challenges such as new standards and modernization to achieve international best practice, especially in areas of security, safety, automation, environmental management, port operations and services, changes in information technology, inter- and intra-regional competition, the ever-increasing size of ships, cargo handling equipments, and traffic growth, among others. Now, in light of this, the Nigerian government is set to invest $800 million on port rehabilitation to ensure efficiency, vessel turnaround time, which will guarantee her port to compete with other ports in the world. As her ability to cope with such rapidly advancing realities will position the nation to benefit from trade opportunities. Now with me in the studio to look at the economic potential of Nigeria's port automating and modernization to meet global standards is former Director General of NIMASA, Temison Omasheye. Uh, good afternoon, Temison. Thank you so much for joining me. Good afternoon and thank you for having me. All right, so now uh, I know we've actually spoken about this uh, earlier, but then looking at the Nigerian ports, can you uh, tell us briefly what the economic potentials are? Well, um, the economic potentials of Nigerian ports are quite vast in the sense that Nigeria so far is an import-dependent import nation. Uh, we're importing quite a lot of goods right now, which of course um, is part of the challenges we're facing as it relates to our, our dollar. But growing, going forward, Nigeria also can be a very export-oriented country, taking into consideration the amount of mineral resources we have in Nigeria, um, in inland. I mean, most of our mineral resources are in places like in Zamfara, Kaduna, Kanu, and all the other places. So there is need for us to begin to develop ports so that we can begin to uh, mine these goods and begin to export them for the greater good of Nigeria. So there's definitely need for us to begin to develop a very strong port infrastructure be they dry ports, be they rail ports, or whatever ports, in order to begin to evacuate goods, which hopefully going forward in the future will be a major part of the exports earnings of Nigeria. All right, so the Nigerian government is actually set to invest $800 million on port rehabilitation to ensure efficiency. How would you react to this particular announcement of the funds for this port rehabilitation? Well, it's, 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 it's a good news going forward, um, but I believe strongly that apart from the amount being used for the rehabilitation of Tin Canal and Port and Apapa Port, but there's also the need for also the rehabilitation of the breakwater in Wari, um, which basically is affecting the draft restriction. Right now, we're having a challenge in being able to get vessels into Wari Port um, due to the collapse of the breakwater at the likes of s -Cravels. So therefore, there's a limitation on the size of vessels that can actually go into the breakwater, um, into Wari Port, which is about 5.9 meters, which is not good at all because that limits the amount of goods that can be loaded. Now, looking at it further, if you take, for instance, the fact that we have a rail line already running to Wari right now, um, there will be a challenge, actually, evacuating the goods because the vessels that are going to come in are going to be a lot smaller. Therefore, the freight rates will be a lot, lot higher. So we need to begin to look at the possibility of developing deep sea ports, which can be bringing in vessels of over 200,000 tons to evacuate the exports, which we project to have going forward. All right, now talking about, about the deep sea ports, how do we move from our over-dependence on Lagos ports? And why is every shipper shipping to Lagos? Well, first of all, the issue quite simply has to do with the ship owner itself. Um, the ship owner himself basically uh, trying to bring in larger vessels so as to reduce its economies of scales. So I'm sure you're aware, most um, container vessels now right now are carrying between 14, 15, 20,000 TEUs. And we do not have deep sea ports in the eastern areas that can carry these kind of um, containers. In addition, we have the challenges we have with, with, with security. As you're aware, um, there is a, a, a war risk premium which is being charged five degrees east of Lagos ports. So what happens basically, the, the, the shipping lines are very comfortable coming to Lagos, dumping their cargoes and leaving us to handle it. So what we're doing right now is that we are moving these cargoes by roads, which is having a major impact on our roads. So what we need to begin to focus on is see how can we develop a container feeder system which can begin to move these containers from Lagos by water to the ports in Delta ports, Eastern ports, and the Calabar ports as well. All right. So it's a pleasure having you, Mr. Omashe, on in our studios. Thank you so much for uh, joining us and also speaking on this. Thank you very much. I very much appreciate it. Thank you.